Um, so I think we move to the third um, paper, which uh, is from a group of uh, three authors, but I think it's Hiteshi who is presenting it. And it's called Electronegativity, Polarizability, and FSGO method. So I'm really curious what that will be about. And I would like to give you the floor if you are ready and you can upload, and that is a if and when you can upload your presentation, please. Okay, Hiteshi, go for it. Konnichiwa. Oh. <laughs> Uh, a very warm greetings to all of you who are present today. Uh, my name is Hiteshi and I'm from India. And uh, today I'm going to present uh, my work on electronegativity, uh, which we have completed using FSGO approach. And uh, I will be presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Martin Labarka and Dr. Tanmay Chakravarti. So I'll uh, right away share my screen now. Okay, uh, is my uh, presentation visible to you? Yes. Perfect, yes. Okay. okay, so I would like to begin now. So uh, our work is based on uh, the calculation of electronegativity using uh, district of polarizability and that we have completed using the FSGO modeling. So let's begin now. So uh, it is very well known fact that electronegativity serves as a very important concept in the field of chemistry. And in fact, uh, apart from chemistry also, uh, there are many other fields where electronegativity plays a very important role, like uh, in case of drug discovery or uh, calculating the bond lengths, band gaps, and studying the reaction patterns. So it is a very important descriptor. Now, moving on to the literature part, uh, we know that Pauling in 1932 was the first one who had given its first definition and its formalism. According to Pauling, the power of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons to itself is known as the electronegativity. Pauling had given uh, the formalism, which is shown here. According to this uh, particular equation, which Pauling gave, uh, the electronegativity can be calculated as the uh, covalent bonds electronegativity difference. And it is a well-known fact that uh, electronegativity cannot be observed directly, hence it cannot be obtained experimentally. Thus, we have to resort to uh, options like computation and theoretical approaches to calculate it. So beginning from Pauling, Next uh, model was given by Mulliken in 1934, which was followed by Gordy in 1946, and then Alred and Rocco in 1958. Apart from that, there are more than 200 electronegativity scales and models until now. However, the problem with them is that they are incompatible with each other. Like I'm referring to Pauling and Mulliken at first, they are themselves incompatible with each other. Pauling is uh, an extrinsic scale, while molecule is uh, intrinsic scale. Pauling is based on the covalent bonds approach, while molecule is based on the atomic structure approach. Uh, apart from that, their units also differ. So you can easily see that there is the problem of incompatibility as well as the definitions are inconsistent and the nature also differs. Like in some cases we see there is energy concept while in some there is force concept. Alred and Rochow's uh, Scale, electronegativity scale is an example of force concepts, while Pauling and Mulliken are based on electronegativity. So uh, now I would be moving towards uh, the non empirical scale of electronegativity, first non empirical scale, because our work relates to this scale particularly. This scale was first uh, proposed by Simon Zander and Tilati in 1976. The scale, the model, was based on Hinz and Jaffe's conceptualization. According to Hinz and Jaffe, they suggested that the degree of electron transfer in the bond AB towards the negative atom may be regarded as a good measure of electronegativity difference. 
that is we can take the deviation and use it as the uh, method to quantify electronegativity so we have uh, seen that simons and his group used this concept and applied it to the model known as fsgo the full form of fsgo is floating spherical gaussian orbital approach so uh, we are moving on the lines of simons which i will be discussing ahead in the next slide so uh, now we first discuss what is basically fsgo approach or fsgo modeling so uh, this approach was first developed and promoted by arthur frost in 1960s this is basically made for the systems which are in their lowest singlet energy states and they have their electron number as even apart from this other systems are also applicable however their accuracy is a bit decreased this method as the name suggests focuses on the orbitals description here orbital description refers to the linear combination of spherical gaussian functions and we can say in a simple language that it is an equivalent of lewis electron pair model it is a quantum mechanical equivalent however i won't be discussing about the technical details of this approach as it is a bit out of my field so uh, we'll be just moving on to the theory part of this approach so uh, the complete uh, simon and uh, their groups equation that they proposed for electronegativity is given in this uh, particular slide here fab refers to the orbital factor since we are uh, talking about the orbital uh, approach hence uh, the calculation for the orbitals is very must in this case so here orbital factor is calculated using the ra and rbs ra and rb here refer to the radius of atom a and radius of atom b using this formula the distances uh, the orbital factor can be calculated its values vary from uh, 0 or less than 0.5 or greater than 0.5 these are the possible values for this factor using these fab values that is the orbital factor values and the uh, atomic electronegativity differences we can easily find out the constant and using that we can finally find out the electronegativity so i will not be explaining much on this since it is a scale given by simons i will be explaining more uh, on our model next uh, descriptor is polarizability uh, the full form or the generally accepted notion is static electric dipole polarizability so polarizability is basically a perturbation a change in the electronic arrangement due to some kind of perturbation normally we say like uh, under the influence of an external field the change in the electronic environment takes place but in case of chemical reactions too we see any kind of change in the atomic arrangement as polarizability and it is taken as a polarizability displacement so uh, we know that polarizability can be theoretically computed as well as it can be measured experimentally as well so the this polarizability can be uh, calculated in this way and uh, apart from that now since our uh, basically model is based on these two descriptors electronegativity and polarizability so i would like to mention that nagle in 1990 he was the first one who presented a correlation between these two properties here kai refers to the electronegativity and uh, 1.66 times the cube root of polarizability here n refers to the uh, number of electrons and chi uh, and alpha refers to the polarizability this equation gives us the value of electronegativity now uh, basically the reason why i have uh, given information of these uh, descriptors and uh, scales is that we are using all these informations to create our model so this is our new electronegativity scale which is based on fsg and polarizability so we are firstly using the orbital approach which comes from here it is known as the polarizability factor in this case now here instead of using the radius we are using the polarizability and using this we can calculate the polarizability factor based on that the constant can be uh, calculated k here is the constant using the fab values we can easily determine the value of chi b or chi a whatever we wish in this 
calculation it is very important to mention that we need to set two molecules as references for example in our in our calculation we took a uh, lithium hydride and uh, hydrogen fluoride as our references so here in this case uh, i would like to mention that uh, chi a refers to hydrogen's electronegativity while chi b refers here to lithium's electronegativity similarly we can do for hydrogen fluoride and then we can easily calculate the electronegativity of hydrogen in this case so we have the constant value we have the electronegativity of hydrogen so this is the final model and we can easily calculate the electronegativities for all the elements through this now uh, these are some of the results of our model firstly our scale is empirical our model is empirical that means it is very easy to calculate and understand and saves a lot of time as compared to computational procedures second thing is that we have uh, observed we have uh, generated uh, electronegativities up to 120 elements i think this is the uh, most which we have got the highest electronegativity of elements so far and uh, apart from that we have also generated noble gases electronegativity and then we have also generated uh, electronegativities for hypothetical elements uh, for example for atomic number 119 and 120 which has been uh, has been been possible until now apart from that uh, when talking about the periodic patterns of our data they are also very much uh, appropriate and the trend is being followed the uh, behaviors uh, which show which would show relativistic effects and such kind of different patterns are being easily shown for example this is the final computation which we have done so this is the data for that electronegativity calculation performed using the fsgo polarizability approach so you can see that when we move from left to right horizontally in a period the electronegativity values are increasing as expected similarly when we move from top to bottom the electronegativity values are decreasing however as it is uh, accepted and it is well known that there are certain exceptions so those are also present in our model one thing uh, which is to be noted is that hydrogen has uh, a very high value 3.730 which is not acceptable but yeah i think that in our condition in our model our model is not supporting those elements or molecules where one electron system is available otherwise all the computations are very much uh, accurate as compared to other other uh, scales and then talking about these noble gases also we have got a very high value now here in the in this case i would like to explain a bit that uh, whenever we talk about electronegativity we say that higher the electronegativity higher is the reactivity but based on the uh, roald hoffman's uh, suggestion we have also uh, observed this that having a very an extremely high electronegativity may point towards the high resistance towards oxidation so here having very high electronegativity of noble gases may be points towards that that fact otherwise we have noted that uh, the uh, values for gold and mercury and all such uh, phenomena that are being shown that appear are being perfectly followed by our data finally we had tried to uh, correlate our model with some uh, scales first is simon et al and then alder drocos and nagley and polling so since simon et al scale is the dimensionless scale we uh, made this correlation we found that the uh, correlation coefficient was equal to 0.872 which is satisfactory in my view then with alder drocos whose uh, concept is based on force uh, unit is force so here also we are getting very good results then nagley's which a uh, scale electronegativity scale which is also based on force concept we have got a good value polling's approach uh, is giving a little bit less uh, correlation but still 0.8 i think is acceptable so uh, the correlations are also comparatively good finally we try to check our work uh, 
is it applying to molecules properly because we had computed our electronegativity for atoms however we wanted to see if it is uh, actually valid to use this model and will it give, give a good uh, like uh, results in case of molecules so we calculated some molecular electronegativity for, for some 60 inorganic molecules and then compared them with the published molecular electronegativity values in that case also we found that the r square was uh, comparatively good now here the word electronegativity equalization principle so basically electronegativity equalization principle states that whenever a molecule formation takes place the electronegativities of all the individual elements uh, these combine and then the electronegativities get equalized and the final molecular electronegativity can be calculated using the geometric mean approach so that is why i have mentioned this and we have used this particular formula for the calculation of molecular data finally uh, i am moving on to the end of our presentation so uh, features of the scale are new scale first thing is that it shows a clear conceptualization of electronegativity we are also following simon's approach simon's uh, concept so we are also using the hens and raffes uh, concept that the degree of electron transfer within a chemical bond ab helps in the measurement of the electronegativity the attraction of the electron pair can be measured as a deviation of the 0.5 number and it is a result of the interplay between the polarizabilities of the atoms since we are using polarizability in this case second thing is that the scale is dimensionless so uh, there is no problem of the unity like it's the force concept or electronegativity uh, or sorry energy or uh, distance or etc such type of uh, issues are also solved until now there are only three dimensionless scales one given by simon second by um, sanderson and uh, the third one by which is a recent work uh, published in 2021 by tentadini and organo Simons et al's approach and our work some comparisons so uh, his scale their scale was non empirical our work was empirical so it's comparatively easy secondly uh, they computed electronegativities for 28 elements while our model is presenting values for 120 elements there was no noble gas data however we are also presenting noble gas data with an explanation finally uh, this model simons et al model was having very less predictive power but we have a very high predictive power our values are very accurate as shown by the correlations and validations and we can also calculate the electronegativity for hypothetical elements so this was basically our work and uh, moving forward we are also uh, following this work and we are trying to uh like uh, calculate more electronegativity patterns and using different descriptors for example uh, currently i was explaining about polarizability we have also done the same thing for hardness and for electrophilicity index and apart from this after this work would be completed we are uh, thinking of uh, performing a comparison among different scales using a non endogamic pattern in which uh, we will be trying to not just correlate simply the scales but uh, use different independent ways of assessing the quality of the scales and uh, this would be very helpful in understanding the electronegativity patterns and the uh, differences between these scales and we are working on the lines of straul who has suggested such method for the comparative purposes so these are the two publications uh, our work has been based on polarizability has been published in chemistry select and uh, currently the based on the work based on hardness is in the under review in the journal of mathematical chemistry so uh, this is all uh, if you have any queries or suggestions uh, right now or even after this uh, particular presentation you may drop us uh, messages and we will be happy to reply to you all thank you so much
Yes, thank you very much, um, Hiteshi. This was a very, very nice presentation on a very, very important topic, which we uh, tend to teach our undergraduate students so that they can deal with, uh, yeah, in, in, in many, many reactions, including nucleophilic and electrophilic substitutions and questions of redox behavior. So this is really interesting. There have already been a couple of co uh, colleagues who have raised uh, their hand and um, I just need to check during the lecture, though I think this is uh, coming now. Uh, the first one, which belongs to your lecture, was from, from the other Klaus, from Klaus Rutenberg. Klaus, hello, and go for your question, please. I, I think Klaus is disconnected. Um, I'm afraid I was just checking. I think that we lost him. Yeah, I'm just checking. I can't see him in the list anymore. I think he may have uh, may have dropped out. So maybe he will come back later. The, the second one um, is then um, from, um, let me just, just check who, who was from, the second. From Eugen Schwartz. Ah, okay. Yeah, that is probably correct. Yes. So please go for it. So can you hear me, please? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, first I apologize that I missed the beginning of the talk. So my question is, uh, how dependent is the definition of your electronegativity depending on the assumed valence number. So for instance, the <clears throat> elements of group one, for instance, this element 119, you assume that it is monovalent or does this have no influence on the electronegativity you determine? Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, actually, uh... We are not uh, relating our model to the, until now we haven't uh, studied what kind of uh, effect uh, valence electrons or valence states would have in our model. And we are yet to uh, study this pattern, so I won't be able to comment on it uh, accurately. I think uh, if I have understood correctly, you were asking the relation between our electronegativity and valence states. Yeah, so I, later I will send you an email and I ask some more detailed questions in this direction. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much for this excellent question and also for the answer and the um, email, which I'm sure will be highly appreciated. The next was a question which was already in the chat from Michelle. Michelle, if you would like to ask this question directly and maybe be a bit more specific, I think it's only about what is the relativistic effect, what it means, right? Yes, that's right. It's a very naive question. I'm just not familiar with how the term is being used in this context. Mm -hmm. So relativistic effect, I don't know. Uh, by relativistic effects, uh, we mean that uh, when we move on to the heavy elements, their sizes become very large. And due to that, the electrons start moving very fast because of the attraction of the uh, nucleus. The electrons are very much uh, attracted towards the nucleus, which increases its uh, like speed of the electrons becomes increased. And due to that, uh, several kind of phenomena or effects start appearing. For example, uh, the simplest one is the uh, gold's color. It is yellow, but otherwise all the transition metals are mostly silvery. And the other one is uh, mercury, it's in liquid state. Apart from that, in lanthanides also, we see there are different kind of, uh, like it's not following the general trend. So all these kind of uh, deviations or differences arise due to relativistic effects. This is due to the speedy movement of electrons due to their higher uh, atomic weight. So, so it's really just uh, relative effects, not relativistic. Effect. Do you mean you're not talking about relativity theory, right? Just relativity. 
She is talking about relativity. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, that's, I hope that has answered this question. I think we, we had this with transcendent and transcendental already. We, we need to be a bit careful with our terminology, I guess. <laughs> Just uh, there are some specific meanings uh, that a, rel a relative is not only relativistic. That is absolutely correct. And they, they necessarily don't, are not your relatives either, which is something else. Um, we, we had this, another question from Eric. Eric, uh, you are here still uh, unless Klaus, who seems to have gone. So Eric, please go for it. Thank you very much for your lecture. Um, I, you, you argued, I think, convincingly that your model is an improvement on the Simons model. But more broadly speaking, you did mention that there are as many as 200 electronegativity scales these days. What, if you had to choose a single feature about your model, why, in other words, why, why would anyone buy it, to put it crudely? Why, sh why should we buy it? Why? What <laughs> Uh, I am giving the answer, huh? yeah? Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Eric, nice question. Thanks for that. This is a very genuine question. And uh, specifically, I uh, generally... Uh, go through this kind of question from the audience always when I present that uh, electronegativity scale and this one. And it is a no doubt that there are too many scales and uh, how someone can say that this is the best one, this is the not best. The thing is that our scale is very simple approach uh, as you are asking about that, that why you, someone will buy our scale so that we can say that yes, it is the simplest method to compute the electronegativity and through which we can predict the number of properties and which are very close to the experimental one. This is the one aspect where I think that we can say that it is the best one to choose. Okay. Okay, uh, does that answer your question or sort of? Well, okay. kind of, I mean, yeah. Kind of, yes. I will yeah. follow up in the, in the coffee. Thank you. Okay. I, I mean, I, I suppose for, for today, this, this was the kind of, of at least for, for this moment, I mean, I don't know exactly where you all are, but for me, it's getting kind of dark and I have to make sure that um, I'm getting my laundry in before it starts getting dark. Um, but if you, if you continue for, for this session, I think for the talks for this session, I'm supposed to chair. I think that has been more or less it. Um, I think the next thing is that you go again in your breakout rooms and you, you, you are most welcome to continue and um, also to maybe catch a coffee or have a cup of tea or whatever you are drinking. So thanks again for, for being here and it was a real pleasure and I, I wish you all the best.